Hello everybody, uh, my name is Rob Foster and I'm a Office Apps and Services MVP and uh, probably like you, um, I am social distancing right now, uh, which basically means I am absolutely bored out of my mind. <laughs> um, so anyway, hope everybody's safe and healthy um, and, and everything, but I figured, you know what, um, while, we're, while we're looking at this and, and we're all kind of uh, distancing from, from, uh, from each other, let's, uh, let's learn some Power BI. And uh, one of the things that my uh, kids have been kind of focused on is the Johns Hopkins data of, of um, uh, data set and, and dashboards that they are publishing out to show how many cases there are, where they are in the world. And um, I got to looking at that and I was thinking, you know what, dang, I'll bet we could do something similar in Power BI. And, uh, you know, worst case, I can learn something and, and uh, hopefully can share it with you. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be looking at that and uh, creating a, a, a dashboard. It's not going to look as great or as sexy as the, um, as the uh, uh, Johns Hopkins one, but we're going to try to get it done in like 20 minutes or less. So just bear with me. Um, before we get started here and jumping in, I wanted to make a call out to uh, the Bifocal podcast. Uh, so this is uh, John White and Jason Himmelstein's uh, podcast. Uh, these guys are the experts here. Uh, I'm just a uh, I'm just a SharePoint guy. So um, wanted to point you towards there if you have any uh, questions or comments or anything you want to learn uh, more in detail about Power BI. Please head over and download this podcast. It's a great one. Um, and, and these guys are super knowledgeable um, as well as everybody they interview. So uh, really great stuff here. Uh, but it's 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 one of my favorites. Uh, definitely one one that I listen to and have learned uh, so much for, uh, from. So uh, jumping into to Power BI, I've got it downloaded here already, and you can see this on my screen here. I've got it uh, ready to go. Um, one of the things that you'll want to do if you don't have it downloaded is you'll want to obviously download it. Uh, you can get to Power BI, the, the desktop app, by going to powerbi.microsoft.com, and I've got that up here, and I'll post links to all this stuff uh, at, at, at the, uh, in the description of this YouTube video. But um, Power BI at Microsoft.com, it's going to take you to this page here. Uh, you can click the Start Free button. Um, everything I'm doing here doesn't require a license. You can just download this free uh, Power BI desktop tool, um, get it installed, and that will basically get you this tool here. And it's, it's just an application that runs on your desktop that allows you to build visual visualizations based on uh, data that you either download or you can type it in or you can set it to a different data sources and, and all of that. Um, but that's really what we're going to uh, be using here at the, at the core of this. Now, the, the inspiration behind this dashboard is actually a really good one here. Um, this, this is a really good dashboard. Uh, my kids are all over it. They love this. Um, and it really puts the, uh, the numbers uh, of what's going on right now with, I'm going to call it coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so you'll hear me referring to it as both. But basically the numbers of this thing that's spreading, um, and so you can track it uh, by total confirmed, how many uh, people have died, how many people have recovered, um, looking at all the different countries. And you can see on a map here, there's, um, there's, there's a map. Now, I want to preface this. Uh, down here looking at my date, it's uh, 1.26 p.m. Uh, in the afternoon uh, on uh, March 15th. Uh, these numbers are going to change rapidly, so they have been since I've been watching it. So what you're seeing on the screen is probably not the accurate representation, but just go with it <laughs> and, and uh, you know, d uh, d use this as a concept to, uh, to build this out if, if you want to. But one of the things that I, I noticed, I really like this dashboard. I like the layout. Um, it really is informative and it really gives you a quick picture as to what's going on. And as I started digging into this dashboard, I noticed down here at the bottom, and there's a lot of text down here, but there's a, um, it shows where all the data is coming from. And, and this is a consolidation of data at multiple sources. There's not one source for this data. These guys are putting this together. Um, and fortunately for us, uh, for this example, uh, they, they are uh, publishing this once a day. It's only once a day. So the numbers we see in our dashboard are gonna be a little different than what we see here, which is more real time. Uh, but they publish it, uh, the dashboard, the data from the dashboard once a day uh, to GitHub. So uh, what I can do, what you can do is just click here. This will open up a GitHub repository um, and you can see here, they, they publish it here. There, there's some readings here about where it's coming from and all of that in the readme. Um, but if you click into the data, and then you also click into the data reports, you can see they've got reports of the data on a daily basis that they're, they're publishing. 
And if we look at what is the most recent version, which is yesterday, and it's about time for them to update it. Um, but we can click into here and we can actually take a look at this data. So you can see they've got it grouped by state and province as well as country. Um, and then, you know, last update date, but most importantly, the numbers here, right? So the confirmed, the death, uh, deaths, the recovered, and then the longitude, uh, latitude and longitude of um, the location for where this country and, and region is, which is important for the map, obviously. Um, so, but we can, we can just grab this data uh, and, and use it right in Power BI. So when I pull up Power BI, um, if you're not familiar with it, it it's, it's fairly intuitive to use uh, and, and, and you should be able to jump in, but I'll just give you a little layout here for the things we're gonna be using. Uh, to get the data, we're just gonna use this Get Data button. Um, and then for the most part, once we get the data in, you'll see the, the fields pop up here, which will basically represent these fields here, province, state, country, region, and so on. Um, and then we'll start building visualizations around that to somewhat recreate that dashboard we saw on that, on that other web page. So let's go ahead and get the data. Now, what we have to do is that I'm looking at a sample of this data. This data is really, um, this is just a visualization in a table format. We can't really consume it like that. But if you look at the raw format of the data, okay, this is just a CSV file. Uh, it's comma separated and I can just copy this URL out Okay, so I'm gonna copy this, and then I'm gonna click on Get Data. And since this is actually posted on a web page, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this data from the web. And what, we'll, what it will do is it's gonna basically just ask me for a URL for where the data is located. So I'm just gonna paste that URL in, and there we go. It's gonna import it, and it should, it's gonna obviously, hey, is this the data you wanna get? Uh, it looks fine to me and I'm gonna click load. Now I can load it here, or if I wanna transform the data, that's another topic for another show. Luckily, we don't have to transform anything, so we can just click load from here and it should load it right on into uh, Power BI and see it do its thing, and it's gonna load it in, and we can start building visualizations absolutely immediately. So it loaded the data, everything's there, um, and let's start building this dashboard out. It's, it's pretty easy to do from here. Now, one of the visualizations, I know they had the, the labels up here for like the, the totals, uh, the deaths and all of that. So let's build those out real quick. It's, it's very easy to do. Um, so the, the totals that they had was total confirmed. So all I need to do is, I'm just gonna click on this, this card here and it's gonna put a card right on the page for us and then, I can select the card and then I can drag the fields. Hey, what, what, la what field do you wanna show in this card? And this is really more like just a label card. So you click on it, I can either drag it down here or I can check the box and then boom, it should show this data right here. Now there's some formatting things we might wanna do as well. So we might want to click on the little format button. Okay, so um, this is the configuration button or the fields uh, view. There's also kind of a properties view for the format that you can do and you, you'll want to change that as well. Um, so here you can see this is showing 156K, 156,000. Um, I'm gonna set this to none and it will show the whole number there. So that's the total number to kind of match what, what the, uh, the other uh, dashboard had. Uh, I think I want to turn on a, a title as well or I might just leave it here. You know what, I'm just gonna leave it here. It just, it, that, that's fine for me for right now. Um, so I'm gonna click that. Let's go ahead and click the confirmed. Let's create a new card. Let's do one for the deaths and we'll move it over. So click a new card. Let's pull it over here. And let's just pull the deaths into that field. And we can also copy and paste this and then just drag it over very easily like that and then just drag the number of recovered into this field and it'll start showing that as well. Um, so let's go ahead and turn that uh, display units to none. And I think this one as well. And that should be set up to go. So now we've built the first three labels or first three uh, views of this, uh, of this table right for the, the dashboard. Now, the next thing that they, they have is they have some, some tables down here. So it's showing um, of the confirmed, where are they confirmed at? Well, let's just create, let's come down on our, on our uh, dashboard. Let's create a table view here. So I'm gonna create a table 
And then on this table, I want to show the number, actually let's show the, um, the country and region and the number of confirmed there, right? So let's do that. I'm just gonna drag this down just a little bit so we can get a little longer view of that. And then let me, let me sort this maybe by total uh, confirmed. So you can get a view there. So the most is in China, second most is in Italy. It's kind of ordered by that. Um, and then say, let's do the same thing for the deaths uh, and the recovered. So I'm just gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste it. And pull it over here. And on this one, let's do instead of confirmed, let's do deaths. And let's sort it. And let's paste it again. And let's move it over. If I can grab it right. <laughs> I'm sure there's an easier way to do this. And uh, John and Jason are probably going to get on to me for not doing it the right way. So I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, all right. So here, let's go ahead and do the recovered. Let's, let's take off the con uh, uh, confirmed here and let's just do recovered and let's sort that. Um, and let's at least align these to where they, they look somewhat. There we go. Somewhat the same size. All right, so now um, I also want to do uh, down at the bottom here, they had a total countries. Let's do another card down here. So let's just grab a card and I'm just going to resize that a little bit down here. And for here, what I want to do is in my fields, I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to do the countries. But here, um, by default, it does the first one in the list, which is Afghanistan, because it starts with an A. Um, but what I want to do here is I want to actually count the distinct countries here. So you can see that I've, I've got a count here now to say there's 143 countries in this list. And I just wanted to, to do that to match that dashboard. Now let me resize it just a hair, just so that we can see it. And there we go. And now the last thing on the list is obviously the big missing piece here, um, and that's the map. So let's do the map and let's build that out. Luckily, we have a map visualization that we can push out. So I'm just going to resize this to about the right size. It's not going to look exactly like uh, the, the Johns Hopkins, but it's, it's close. It's a map. You get the idea. So let's make it like that. And on the map, uh, one of the things, the fields we have, options here we have is... Um, really related to this is the location, there's a legend, there's a latitude, longitude, size, and tool tips. So what I want to do here is I want to, let's just drag latitude over to latitude, longitude over to longitude, right? So now you start to get a view of the map here. There's, there's the dots there. And then on the size, let's resize these dots based on the number of confirmed that we have. So let's do that. So you'll see it start to, you can see it start to get bigger there in the middle. Uh, but then you can zoom in, you know, since I'm in the U.S. here, you can zoom in and see, you know, where, where things are located. And as you click into things on this map as well, you can drill down. So as I click into Tennessee, which is where I'm located, well, <laughs> yeah, you can see it kind of it, it sorts and filters based on, based on what you've clicked there. Um, you know, so the, the, uh, all of the other tables and stuff sort, which I'm only showing country. Um, I'm only showing confirm, so it'll only show for the U.S., but, uh, but you get the point. So as you start to drill down, if we click on China, right, it will only show the Chinese there, and the map changes as we, as we zoom into there um, and, and see that. So uh, very cool and very easy to do. So that's, that's really um, all I wanted to show here is that we, we've consumed the data. Um, we've, we've imported into... Uh, Power BI, and we started to build this visualization, which again, not quite as sexy as the one that's uh, that's here at Johns Hopkins, but it's uh, but it's close. I mean, it, it does do something very similar. Um, now you might want to do some some formatting as well, so you could change the colors of these, but uh, it, it gets the point. So. One thing that you'll notice here before I let you go um, and stop, stop broadcasting this, um, one of the things that you'll notice is that in the data, um, as, we, as we go back over into the raw data, every day they publish a new uh, version of the data. So, and it comes in the form of a new file. So 
this next file will be 03-15-2020, which is, uh, represents the data from today. Um, all you'll need to do in Power BI to refresh that data is go to your edit queries and then edit data source settings. And then from there, you can click, click the data source that we're consuming and click change source. And then what that will do is you just paste the new URL in, it will import the new data, and then your graph will automatically update. Your, your, your dashboard will automatically update. I'm sure there's a way to automate this, but that's kind of the way I've been doing it. Uh, so, but uh, it works. Anyway, thanks for your time today. I hope you learned something about Power BI uh, and, and, uh, and everything. But please feel free to leave me a comment or shoot me an email uh, at rob at robfoster.net. Um, Check out the Bifocal Show. Um, I also am a co-host of a uh, of a podcast called Tech Explaining, so you can get to that uh, at techexplaining.net. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and please let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thank you so much.